strand regarding the organ harvest saga involving the former Senate uh, Deputy President Ike Kerimadu and his family. The Nigerian Immigration Service affirmed that David Wan Nimi, who was alleged to have been trafficked to the United Kingdom for organ harvest by Senator Kerimadu and wife Beatrice, is 21 years old and not 15, as claimed by him. Also, a forensic psychologist, Dr. Law Mefo, described Wan Nimi as a serial liar who should not be taken seriously. He said all the information coming out, including the international passport issued on the 4th of November 2021, his bank verification number, BBN, done on the 21st of October 2019, his national identity number, NIN, done on the 15th of June 2021, point to the fact that he was born on the 12th of October 2000, therefore 21 years old. At least in terms of this data and everything, we, we might not have synchronized it, but mm. we are getting something right. Yes. So yes. you cannot, you know, just keep us to speed on this well, saga. I, I think this is a very complex issue, and we need to look at it deeply. You know, uh, a lot of people have gone to social media to write so many things. Some attacking the Kodemadu, accusing him of uh, organ harvesting and all sort of things. But we need to be patient and look at the old side. First of all, we need to know that kidney is kidney problem is a major problem in Nigeria. We have about 25 million people that have one kidney problem or the other, and then about 180,000 Nigerians go through dialysis, mm. you know, every month. And then we understand to go through kidney dialysis, you need about 400,000 naira in a month. So. For a, for a parent that, you know, the uh, daughter is having kidney problem, you are in a confused state. You want to make sure you resolve that problem. And for them to have traveled to UK to look for a solution, uh, it is normal for any parent that is in that kind of situation. Now, on the issue of our little man, uh, donating organ is legitimate. If it's for humanitarian purpose, a lot of people do it. When people are looking for kidney, you donate your kidney to save human life. It is done all over the world. It's not, a, it's not a crime. Now. now, unfortunately, in Nigeria, people out of desperation, I wouldn't even say out of poverty, because if the, there must be some level of poverty that there are certain things you should not do. We know that every human being can live, has two kidneys, and you can sustain your, yourself with only one. But people go as far as selling one kidney for ten thousand mm. dollars, for fifteen thousand dollars. It has been going on for look a very long boy. time. Boy, yeah. is, does it look like a fifteen-year-old boy at all? Well. So, <laughs> you see, I, I, I believe before the family travel to UK, you cannot do kidney transplant without confirming whether the kidney rhymes. You know. We know whether it's, you know, you yes, know. yes, uh, hey. so they, must, they must have so done that. They me. must have done that, mm. and that must have been with consent of the boy. You understand the point? And now that the, the immigration is saying that he got a passport, and that passport is 20, 22 years old, not 15. So it means that uh, if you are 22, 21. 21, you are an adult, you know, you can take decisions based out of your own free will. So, but, you know, I think it's now, when it go to UK, it's now saying that it's um, 15. 15 and all that. So, it's a bit complex. But if he's truly 21 years old, then, you know, he can take decision to say, okay, I want to donate my organ to, you know, to save human life. So, probably, maybe he's trying to exploit the family. You know, it's, it's not clear. But I think uh, of, in I this think ahead, we are able to get, intent, you know, this case. Well, mm. I, I, for me, uh, what we should... Uh, what I think I appreciate in this case is the fact that uh, Nigeria's data collection system has improved tremendously. And that is why we can be talking about NIMC, mm. we can be talking about uh, BVN, BVN mm. and all of that, which must, you know, match uh, 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 the information. So, then, yes, the information. So I, I think that, uh, that, we, that we go a long way in helping to resolve this matter. And I was not also surprised that uh, the Kwele Madus 
uh, quickly sued NIMC and the two banks that uh, uh, have uh, that this guy is using as uh, where he has his account because mm. there are two banks that are also sued where he claims to have accounts because all these people have information mm. about him. They also sue the passport, the immigration, because the immigration also has information. Because the immigration now, you cannot collect a passport without linking it to your NIM, your, mm. NIM, your name. So if immigration could put the date of birth that it, it puts on its passport, it means that immigration must have linked it with the NIM, mm. and it means that that information must be true to them. So, as far as the Equilibrium Madus are concerned, they are only acting based on the information that is available yeah. Yeah. to them. And uh, however, I wouldn't also want a situation where anybody should come out now to say somebody is a, a pathetic liar or a consistent liar. No, let the court do its work mm. and let's know what is going on but at least it is good that we have data okay better than what we used to have we have case and calling us from Owari. Mr. Ayo, good evening Hi, good evening good evening Kesando. Yes. you see first i want to say that the truth about it is that whoever that advised that young man to actually take the decision he has taken advised him wrongly that is one step i think as if the, the picture we're even seeing clearly shows that that guy is not in mind. And documents that are available to us are now verifying it. It is quite unfortunate that this thing is happening to him. But I'm sure the, the, the judges over there will do justice to it. But I also want us to take a moral lesson out of this. The likes of Ikwe Mada and his class, if they had done something right since 1999, probably get us this kind of sentence in the country all over the country, probably this embarrassment is facing outside the shores of this country, he wouldn't have faced them. This is the clear lesson. I think this is karma coming now, that our leaders, things we're supposed to do. COVID came here and none of them could leave the shores of this country. Can we start investing in Nigeria? If we have done in Nigeria, probably taking this boy to, to Lagos, Calabar, or Enugu, or anywhere. This kind of international embarrassment shouldn't have come to his family. I think that is the only thing. But when it comes to what this young man is doing or how he has taken this whole thing, I do not support it. But hopefully, justice must be there. But he just must learn to do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution, Chris Andrew. You, you know that we, because by the 7th of July, there's a, there's a kind of airing on this case. But the bottom line there is that we can't um, we can't start blaming anybody. Yeah. See, um, yeah. Yeah. We heard the verdicts no, and no process of it is not mm. our emotions yeah. that they will use to run mm. the case. It is based mm. on evidence on yeah. ground yeah. that mm. if the British government, if they find out that look, yes, the guy was made uh, it was promised some mm. monetary compensation, mm. that could be very dangerous to yeah. Senator Ike yeah. Ike yeah. Madu. Yeah. Yeah. Fight is going to be very dangerous. And we have seen clearly that the way the legal system works in UK, you know, probably is different from here. There's rule of law. Nobody is above the law. Nobody wants to know whether you are this or that. You know, you'll be treated equally the way every other person will be treated. And it also shows that when a system is bad, whether you are rich or you are poor, you are going to be victims. If you have had very good health system in Nigeria, you know, very good social system, this question of people going abroad for, you know, one kind of thing or the other will not even arise. But I, you know, I gather so that this kidney can transplant, that uh, it has been going on, as in it's something that can be done in Nigeria, that yeah, is done in Lagos, is done in Abuja. St. Nicholas. Yes, they you know, do it in some other private hospitals. there are very hospitals. few hospitals. You know, I they think they've been doing it for almost I think we have just now. about 180 nephrologists, you know, who are specialists all over the country. So, and it's expensive, you know, and most people have trust in the medical system of Europe more than they have in our own mm. system. So it's a lesson that we need to let things work here mm -hmm. so that when things work, people will not have the reason to be going abroad for every little illness, either major illness or minor illness. We need to let our medical system work here for the benefit of the rich and the mm -hmm. poor. And uh, when you now think of the number of Nigerian doctors 
and nurses and medical yeah, that personnel are that are going mm. out now you now you can imagine what the implication will be for us mm. in the nearest future yeah. because these are the experts that should be able to even take care of the medical needs of nigerians mm. but because things are not working here they are moving to where things are working yeah. and at the end of the day even the rich can become victims as we have seen in this case yeah. Even though I don't want to single out any uh, Ekwere Madu and say that if he has done anything, he's not the only one that has been in government yeah. since 99. Yeah. And yeah. it's not as if he was in government and, uh, or the president or anything like that. We are just talking to the ruling class yeah. and not uh, singling mm. out mm. anybody. And the need for and us to make, things, yeah. Yes, yeah. to make things work mm. in our own system so that we don't go looking for... Because... <laughs> Don't let's even go there. As it is now, that case, as it is now, it is that kid, that person that is regarded as a kid, as far as UK is concerned, against a query mm -hmm. That is already the line of argument. If you follow what they, they are saying in court, because that, kid, that guy is considered as an underage. Whatever he tells them, and you know their own system. It doesn't matter where you are born. Once you are a kid, you are a kid. Mm. Do you know that even if you travel to the UK or the US and you are an illegal immigrant and your child is a kid, he will still enjoy all the benefits mm. that children in their countries enjoy, regardless of your, your own status, status yeah. as the parent. So mm. they, they, they make the law to work for everybody, whether poor or rich. Mm. And... Let's see how this goes, really. So that's why Kuromadro has gone to court to sue some of these agencies in Nigeria and, and banks. To what extent? Uh, well, that the Nigerian legal system again will come to we come to that again. We will see how long will it take for him to get judgment, you mm -hmm. know? But I think he should be more focused on what is going to happen at the British court. Mm -hmm. He should get his facts right and present it in the most honest manner because. The British court is not <laughs> like third world uh, court where you can manipulate things. You just need to get all the facts right. Whether this uh, fellow is underage, whether he's doing it to, to for uh, financial gains, or whether it was you know a kind of uh, coercion, you know that was coerced to take the action that he has taken. Mm. So I think uh, he needs to get good lawyers to defend himself. You know, and we are waiting to see what comes out of it. I think the. The, the penalty is life in prison? No, 10 years. Uh, 10 years, 10 year. years imprisonment. Mm. But I think it's going to court in Nigeria. It's just to establish the age mm. of this person. All he just wanted to do was to establish mm. the That's age. That's a big so factor there now. A big, that is mm. a big factor, okay. yes. Okay. I want to thank you, Wali Adewi mm. and Ola Bisi for today for your contribution today and that are offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. Join us every Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. for Journalist Hangout on Sunday.